What makes luxury? The concept. Let's explore that with the Monbiu One Nautical Sailor Box Wallet. Ooh, in this nice big box right here. It presents itself very well. It's made from premium materials and even has a very expensive price tag to go along with it. But does that make it luxury? Here we have the Monbiu presentation. It's a very impressive box that came to us. And uh, a little no worse for wear, but uh, shipping halfway across the world. So let's open this up and see what we are presented with. Ooh, wow, look at this. All right, so we have what looks to be a two-year warranty card. It's metal, very nice. And here is the serialized number for this particular wallet. We also have a fairly extensive user manual, which gives us the instructions here on how to use this Arabic. All right, and then here is the wallet itself. We'll set this box aside. Yeah, right. This is the Monbiu One Nautical Sailor. Obviously, we've got a blue and white tone going here, which emphasizes that. We've got a nice logo here. It's all metal except for this leather piece in the front. These are slots for coins. We'll show how they operate. Quite clever, actually. So it sits in your hand. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Austrians Timon Miklin and Mikhail Kramal founded Monbiu to solve their problem of combining coins, cash, and of course cards into a compact but luxurious wallet. The families of both men have been a background in detailed craftsmanship, which provided them the ability to not only design, but also build the Monbiu wallets in Austria. On the front of this wallet, we have a cash slot right here. And it has a thumb push. Cash goes into the top here, folded in thirds or quarters in order to make that happen. If we pull, roll this over, we have coin slots, two of them actually. And the capacity is dependent on the kind of coins you put in there. But uh, they say up to six coins. You get three coins in each one of these slots. And the, the exposure here is that you're pushing these out via your thumb like this. Then we have the card slot right here at the top. It has this a trigger mechanism. It has a capacity up to seven cards. That's dependent, of course, on embossed or non-embossed cards. It has this spring loader right here, which actually protects the cards from falling out. Uh, once this is in place, then, of course, the cards can't come out. When you need your cards, by pulling this back, there's a spring-loaded mechanism at the bottom, which we'll show you as we get further into the review. And, of course, due to the materials and all this, being that it's metal, it provides RFID protection. It measures 3.9 by 2.4 by 0.6 and it weighs 137 grams. That is empty. So what creates a brand and the associated value? It's perception, and perception creates the single largest intangible growth value for a particular brand. The main dimension of perception is the narrative or the company's story. Now think about the top two brands from Austria, Red Bull and Swarovski. Have some Red Bull. Red Bull? What the hell is Red Bull? You never heard of Red Bull? It's an energy drink. The instant you hear their names, you know what they do and their story. So what perception value do you place on their brands and are willing to spend on their products due to that value association? Well, fashion companies show and tell their story in everything they do. Runway shows, floor displays, commercials, endorsements, sponsorships. The narrative includes the value that the brand communicates and supports via their messaging. And the narrative forges the emotional connection, that's what's important, to the brand's need to sustain the loyalty and growth of their customers. So does Monbiu do that for you as a wallet? Well, what if it was a Gucci or Versace wallet? company recommends up to seven cards. I think five is reasonable here. And as you can see, they just they come out pretty easy. Got old Curly in here. And so we can add yet another card that kind of gets us where we need to go. Uh, reasonable, minimal is probably five. Reasonable, I still think is seven, as well as six coins, various coins you can put in here. There are some limitations on this, which we'll talk about in just a second. For a pocket insertion test, you can see that it uh, fits best in the front. This really is not a rear pocket wallet due to it being 
Well, a metal box that would not be really good for your back. This is designed and made in Austria. The body is made from aluminum. All the parts are metal, actually. And this leather component here is an Italian leather. It also uh, utilizes a deserto cactus leather for those that are looking for more of a vegan plant-based option. That deserto is actually made in Mexico. The cash slot is glued to the back. You can tell with just uh, three slips of cash in there, it begins to bulge it a bit. And the coin uh, card mechanism, both this card mechanism and this coin mechanism are patented. And we'll show you what that looks like down here. And this is really quite clever itself. It has a two-year warranty against manufacturing defects, and they also have a repair service for a fee, which guarantees to return your wallet within seven days if something goes wrong. Now, the price on this is $226, or 198 euros. So far, do you see the luxury value in the Monbu wallet narrative? Now, we know that cash really is secondary on this wallet. Coins are too, but we'll talk about cash first. Wallets like Secred, who also glue their secondary wallet piece onto their wallet, provides this storage mechanism. The Monbu requires to fold your currency in either thirds or fourths, depending on your preference. And honestly, this would be for emergency cash in my mind, not really everyday cash carry due to its limitation. There's only three uh, notes in here, and you can see how it begins to expand this quite a bit. Coin storage is not really plentiful, so if you want to reduce your pocket that's full of change, if you can get it down to six coins, that's perfect for you. And with the, the way this functions, it's really quite clever. There's tension bars on both sides. And if I push this coin out here, you'll notice that it kind of pops out. And the reason why is there are bows. This is, it comes down and comes up and comes up. And you can see how this moves freely. But once I move it into this middle portion, there's tension and it holds it in place. There's three different tension bar spaces that hold the coins in. And when you want to move them, you just push them and it pops into the next. And you'll notice that this just kind of pops out. Really quite clever to keep these, these coins in play. The only concern here, of course, is that it can't hold you know, larger coins. So this is a, a gimme, of course. You can put a half dollar in there. But even if we're looking at one and two pound uh, coins from the UK, uh, the two pounder, for example, is just too wide, but it's also too thick. And so where the one pound may fit by way of its circumference, it doesn't because it's, it's a height there. It's just too thick. It's thickness to get in there. Another concern, obviously, is with small I don't say obviously, whoops, yeah, see there? This is just a small, uh, this is one penny. Um, and you, to get coins in, you have to drop it in, then you need to pull it down with your thumb. Smaller coins are a little more difficult to do that with, but you are moving these coins around with your thumb, which is great, and it, it works in either direction based off your preference. Now, card storage is secure right up here due to this trigger. The trigger prevents everything from coming out, even though you may want to, you know, handle it brusquely. And when you flip this little trigger open, it pushes the cards up, but it's not this. There are some, the lifter mechanisms right here at the bottom. And so there's a lifter on this side and there's a lifter on this side. And when you're pushing these cards in and this locks into place, it has these lifters down and the spring is underneath. And when you actually open this trigger, uh, the cards are pushed upwards. Sometimes if you're up higher, you know, with not much, uh, you know, gravity we're looking at here, they don't go very high. If you have it down a little bit more, they'll come out further. Uh, the issue is that this is a little weak by way of the spring down here. And you can look from the interior mechanism that the lifters are also made from metal and it's spring-loaded underneath. Finally, what makes luxury? Well, you do. You being sold on the elements that make something worthwhile to you is what elevates it to a luxury or something that is luxurious, which really means just great comfort. So when you're tempted to purchase something that's obviously many times more than the actual value of the materials and labor, you're paying for a brand and the associated luxury. And it's not a bad thing, but don't be fooled. We all justify our own luxuries. Now onto the final score. For quality, a five. This is made with great material and great care. Price, a one. With similar type wallets, this is double the cost, but is the benefit there or are you really paying for luxury? Compared to similar items and materials used, its price is very high. Features of four. The coin holding feature is quite unique and is the way to handle coins without adding too much bulk to your, your pocket. With usability being a three, the finger trigger works, albeit the spring is a little weak, but still functional, and perception of three. It's no Hermes yet. And that gives us a final score of 30 out of 50. I always give you a recommendation for the next video to watch. This is the one I recommend you kind of go after next. Or these other ones are just fine as well. We'll see you in the next review. Bye.